to order, and I'd like to introduce, um, we have some special guests here from a scout, local scout troop, and instead of me starting us with a pledge, I'd like to introduce Nicholas Cockhill, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance for today. Uh, please rise. Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mrs. Clifford, for your invitation. I just wanted to give a quick update on the growth of the orchestra program. It shouldn't take me too long. Um, in your hands, you should have a handout. Um, on the left side of the handout gives the 2015-16 data. Um, Claire Schreiner and myself teach all of the students, grades 5 through 12. I teach at Horseman and uh, Garden City High School. I currently have 237 students. She has six buildings and has about 215 students. All total, we have around 450. Next year, with the excellent retention that we've been having, we are looking at having closer to 530, 525 to 530. Um, we've got a big class of sixth graders moving up, so that means I'm gonna have about 60 kids in the seventh grade and she'll have 30 at KH, and then the eighth graders are gonna move up too, so it's, that 60 kids coming into the high school as well. So um, on the second page, and you can kind of read this on your own, but Mr. Rood had asked me if um, I could please provide some data about our comparison with our district for orchestra along with some other school districts. And so I contacted some of my colleagues um, from McPherson, Hayes, Shawnee Heights, Topeka West, Salina, Derby, Washburn Rural, Wichita East. Now they have eight high schools and I only talked to one of the directors, but he's kind of the uh, music coordinator for the district. Um, and then my friend Jane Linden moved over at Dodge. Um, of these, uh, Wichita East and Dodge were the biggest, but we were the only group that had four orchestras at our high school. So I thought that was pretty significant. Um, you can look and see how many classes they have total and. Um, all that, all of that information. Um, so Lina really is in a bad way right now. They have 550 students, and they start in grade four. So these two teachers are like running their heads off. But anyway, um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the positive things that are going on in our school district. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Do I do grade four? Huh? Do I do grade four? Are you going to hire another teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Only if something happens at Topeka. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're good then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. Let me know if you have questions. Yes. Just a question on, I mean, when you have that kind of growth, how are you doing on, how are you doing on being able to supply instruments and maintain instruments? Well, currently, KJ has been able to help us out, and we're continuing to be able to do that. More and more of our students are actually purchasing their own. And we're, we work very closely with Cincinnati Music, who does all of our repair and stuff. I've been told that we're over budget on repair, which is not a shock, because it's, it covers 5 through 12 band and orchestra. We have 450 students. Band has at least that many, if not more. And I know a lot of them own their own as well, but it's still quite costly. The only issue I think we're having really is to make sure that they get repaired. So, um, but we are very generously supplied with instruments. Um, that really helps a lot. We try to make sure that all of the fifth and sixth graders have an instrument to use because a lot of times they grow. I don't know if you know this or not, but orchestra instruments come in different sizes. And so I have a little small half size violin at my house for my kids, but yeah, my high schoolers use a big instrument because it fits their body. So, so that changes over time. Yes, 
usually once they hit about seventh or eighth grade, they're playing on a full size instrument. I have one girl at the high school who is very petite, and she plays on a half size still. So, can you give us a little history behind changing the name from concert orchestra to Philharmonic Orchestra? Oh yes, Mrs. Clifford was asking me the same thing. What I was trying to do um, this year in my grade book, it was very confusing because I have symphonic, concert, concert, concert. But they're three separate classes. I teach different music. I teach at different levels. So I wanted just to switch the name. I've got them all leveled so that a student has the exact place where they fit. The freshmen will have, have their own class, and they have had for a couple of years now. And I'm, I'm working on getting that changed so it will actually say freshman orchestra. The concert orchestra is a step above that. Kids, most of those kids just enjoy playing. They're just kind of there to have a good time. And that's OK, because there's a place for them. And then the Philharmonic is like a preparation for the symphonic, which is the top group. So, yeah, but that way everybody has a place to belong. Yeah, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot or on this question, but we had a lot of consideration at the high school level for changing the schedule to a seven-period day, which reduces the opportunity for electives for the high school kids. And certainly puts a challenge, I think, on, on coordinating all of this between buildings. And is my expectation was that that was going to reduce participation numbers because of the challenge of fitting it in, fitting everything into what a student is trying to accomplish. Do you have a sense of that as well? I mean, will that limit limit some of these numbers, or do you have? Is it too early um, to tell? I recent, I just this morning, I got an email from Mrs. Yonkman in the counselor's office at the Arts and Communications Academy, and she gave me a roster, and I compared it to the roster that I posted outside my door after I did auditions, and I think there was only three or four on my list that she didn't have on her list. So right now, I have not noticed an impact that way because I think the kids are enjoying what they're doing and. In fact, I had one of my upperclassmen tell me that he was going to try to take a, a zero hour and an online course so that he could get all of his music classes in. And this is a kid that's in jazz band and orchestra and choir. And, you know, he does all of this stuff. But he's willing to make the sacrifice to make it fit. So, and this, that's his thing. You know, music is his thing. And that will be what he does for his life. So, um, thank you. Appreciate that. Yes? I just, I want to thank you for what you do because I, coming from a small community, it's a privilege to have an orchestra at any size level and um, to be able to teach that variety of kids and make sure everyone has a place that's important. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Actually, Mr. Stoppel. Oh, is he here? I didn't see him. Okay. Good evening. I'd like to uh, thank you for taking time out of the board meeting to recognize our four-time defending state wrestling champions. Um, before I turn it over to Coach Pratel, I would like to recognize a couple of people. Uh, Michael Pratel is the 6A Wrestler of the Year, according to the Kansas Wrestling Coaches Association. And Coach Pratel has been uh, nominated as the Coach of the Year by the same organization. So I'd like to congratulate both of those <laughs> same time I can't do it without my assistance and uh, I got a great coaching staff and that's the first people that I'm going to recognize. Uh, Coach Lappin, head assistant, <coughs> Coach Perez, Coach Waller, and Coach Smith <coughs> and uh, another coach that couldn't be with here with us tonight, um, uh, Coach Baker who's also going to resign and he was also the head coach at uh, Horace Good so we're going to miss him tremendously but an outstanding group of coaches best coaching staff in the state of Kansas as far as I'm concerned and it's uh, you know it's it, it's very very true because we've done this four times and uh, I couldn't do it without the, the, the men that I have as my coaches so anyway I'm going to start out with uh, um, the wrestlers and I'm going to start by weight although they're probably much heavier than what they uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kai Perez come on up 
He, uh, he took third place this year. He wrestled 120 for us, and uh, just a sophomore, so we're expecting great things for him in the next couple of years. Michael Prieto, 138, senior. Curtis Neer, wrestled 145 for us this year, ended up in uh, sixth place. He's also a sophomore, so a lot of great kids coming back. Those aren't the new ones, yeah. <laughs> Alec Castillo, Russell 152 for us, he's a senior. Um, had a great season this year, ended up in third place for us. <laughs> Quentin LaPointe, sophomore, ended up in fourth place for us this year. Had a great season, just a sophomore as well, so you know, we're pretty young as a team. Jesse Nunez, wrestled 170 for us, state champion, junior, so expecting great things from him next year as well. Dang. Wow. Also known for his uh, skills on the football field, so he's our quarterback. He's wearing the blank. Yeah. Antonio Perez. Senior, Russell 182 for us. He was just one match short of placing, but uh, all his points that uh, he earned for us were very much needed. Senior. So, so far, as senior or sophomore? Senior, sophomore. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got a junior in, in Jesse. Right. Jesse's a junior. Z Carrera, Russell 195 for us. He's a junior. Ended up in third place this year. Benny Hernandez, a junior, wrestled 220 for us. I think he's going to be our heavyweight next year. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up in third place. Our big guy, Aaron Lozano, wrestled heavyweight for us, ended up in third place this year, and um, did a great, great job, had a great career. And then the last thing I want to mention about these boys is uh, um, they're also students, you know, student athletes, and I really, we really stress, uh, you know, grades and, and this and that, and. Uh, we made honorable mention all academic team this year for the state of Kansas, which is uh, you have to have a 3.0 or above. So these guys uh, did that. So great job, guys. I'd like to add that these guys are great ambassadors for Jordan City High School. They embody everything that is great about Jordan City and the high school. I'm very proud of these guys and, and the coaching staff. They have accomplished something that is really remarkable in <coughs> sports. So, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Can we ask the coaches to come for the line too, please? <laughs>